Okay, we have here today another integral. This one's from the UK integration B 2024, number 10. We have the integral from zero to infinity, sine squared x over x squared dx. Okay, I know exactly two different ways to do this one. The first one, of course, is gonna be Feynman's trick. And the second one, the one I'm gonna do in this video is I wanna do this using Laplace transforms. I may come back and do a video doing it with Feynman's trick at another time. So to do this using Laplace transforms, we're gonna need a couple of formulas and a little bit of background before we get started with this. Okay, so we have a few formulas over here to the right that we can use a little bit later, but to start with, I just wanna have here at the bottom, the definition of the Laplace transform, that if we have the Laplace transform of some function, f of t, we define it as an integral where we have, we're going from zero to infinity, e minus st of f of t. So coming back to our problem here, we've got our bounds set up zero to infinity. What I'm gonna actually do is I'm gonna create this e minus st part for this. So if we rewrite it, and I write this as e minus st of all this stuff here, well then all of this right here, this is gonna be the same thing as the Laplace transform of sine squared x over x squared. And now you might be bothered that we just added in this term here and we changed the integral. Well, the reason this works is because we can just say, we can set s equal to zero, so then this whole term becomes one and we haven't changed it. We just have to kind of keep this in mind. What we'll do is we'll solve this integral or this Laplace transform right here. We'll have this as our goal, but then in the end, we're gonna to need to plug back in this zero value. So we can use a little notation here too. We can use this capital F. We're gonna get back here a function in terms of S. So we use this capital F to tell us this is gonna be the result of a Laplace transform, kind of like this, actually it's the same thing as this capital F that we're using over here. So in the end, to get back to our goal here, what we're gonna to wanna to find is just this big F at zero. And so what we're gonna to wanna to do here is we just wanna find a value for this Laplace transform right now. And what we can use on it is this last formula right here, because you notice it's got that same kind of form where we're dividing by t, or in our case, x. And so this is gonna give us a way to calculate this, but what we have to do is we have to kind of build up to it. And this right here, if we call our f of t value sine squared x, then what we're gonna need in order to use this formula is just gonna be the Laplace transform of sine squared x. That's gonna be like this f of u value. We wanna start with the Laplace transform of just sine squared x, and then find the value of sine squared x over x, and then find the value of sine squared x over x squared. So basically what we're gonna do is we're just gonna use this last formula here repeatedly to build up until we get to x squared. So like in theory, this could be anything. This could be like x to the 10 and you do it 10 times. I don't think it would be practical that way because you don't really wanna integrate 10 times. But in theory, you could use this formula as many times as you want, as long as you can do all the integrals. Okay, so for my first step on this, I'm just gonna need the Laplace transform of sine squared of x. And I don't actually have a formula for this, but what we can do is we can just use the power reduction on this. So the formula we have for this is sine squared x. So I can write this as one half times one minus cosine two x. So we can actually break this up just like as if it was an integral because actually Laplace transform is an integral. So I can bring one half in front here, and then we take the Laplace transform of one, then distributing the minus one half to the next part, and take the Laplace transform of just cosine of two x. Now for this first Laplace transform here, I'm just gonna use this formula here. On any of these formulas, I've derived these in previous videos, I have a Laplace transform playlist. So if you don't know where any of this is coming from, check out that playlist and you can see how we get these formulas. Now for this one right here, we're just gonna use, this is like the most simple Laplace transform of all, which is just Laplace transform of a constant. In our case, the constant A is gonna be just one. So our formula for this is gonna be, this is just gonna be one over S for this first one. Here we go to minus one half. Now, um, Laplace transform cosine two X. We use this one here where our A value is gonna be two. So what we're gonna have is S squared plus our A squared, plus our A value squared is gonna be a plus four. And we have S in the numerator. And so just like that, we've got our value for the Laplace transform of sine squared X. Okay, now for the next step in building up to our X squared here, now we need to find the Laplace transform of sine squared x over x using this formula over here. To make it clear, like in this formula, the sine squared x, this is like this f of t here. So if you wanna think of that as the f of x, then the big F of u, that's gonna be this Laplace transform right here. So just keep that in mind, here's like our big f of s value right here. 
Okay. But in order to use this formula, we're immediately gonna do a variable change, just putting it back to u. These are all definite integrals, so we can change the variables any way we like. So going ahead with this formula here, we have the integral from s to infinity, and then we're gonna have all this, which I'm gonna break up in a second, but we're changing the variable to u. So this is gonna become 1 half times 1 over u minus 1 half u over u squared plus 4 du. I can split this up into two integrals, bring constants up front, so we're integrating from s to infinity du over u on this one, bring the constant up front here, and we'll have u du u squared plus 4. I can set up a substitution on here. If I just multiply in by 2, and then multiply by 1 half in front, we just multiply by 1, that way we have the derivative of the denominator in the numerator. So it's like if we did another substitution, we're gonna do this in our head, but if I called this like t, then all this stuff would be dt, and then we just have the common integral dt over t. So when we do this out here, this is gonna become 1 half natural log of u. I'm gonna drop the absolute value because we're dealing with s as always a positive number, so we'll drop absolute value on this. Then here we're gonna have, this is gonna become minus one over four. Then this is gonna be natural log u squared plus four. Again, always positive. And then we just need to evaluate this from s to infinity, but clearly I'm out of space. Let me clean it up. So before evaluating, let's combine these with um, log properties. So I can, I want the same coefficient in front, so I can multiply by one half here. So now we have a fourth, but so I don't change it, I can just square the u here. And so then I can combine these together. We can write it, pull the one fourth out front. And then with log properties, I can write this as u squared over u squared plus four. And then evaluating this as a limit, when u's going to infinity, this part here becomes one, natural log of one is zero. So the first part's just zero. Then we plug in an s, we're gonna have minus one over four. And then we're basically just plugging in the s. So it's just gonna be s squared over s squared plus four. And so I'll just get rid of this zero, and then this is gonna be our value for the Laplace transform of sine squared x over x. Let's capture that, and then we're just gonna to to do this one more time to build up to our x squared. Okay, now just one more time, using this same formula over here, we've captured the previous value. And again, just notice that what we're doing right here, this is gonna be the same thing as just this integral right here. Our goal, as long as our s value is equal to zero. So we're pretty close. And so what I've done is just rewritten what's inside the Laplace transform, just trying to get it in this form. We see clearly we're dividing by x. And then this value in the numerator here, this is the thing we already found. So we have, we already have our Laplace transform value right here. We just repeat the process. So again, using the formula, we're going from s to infinity. And so we have our big f of s value right here. So we'll bring that in and integrate it, but we're just going to change the variable to u. First, I'll take this minus 1 fourth out as a constant, and then we'll write all this other stuff in, natural log u squared over u squared plus 4. And now a couple things I want to do in this, we want to get this value of this Laplace transform, but ultimately we're going to be plugging 0 back in. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this s, and instead of evaluating it s, let's just go directly, save a step, and we'll evaluate it at 0. And then let's use log properties to break this up as natural log u squared minus natural log u squared plus 4. And then one more thing, let's actually take this 2 and bring this up front, again with, again with log properties, just because then on this integral of natural log u, I can just use a formula on this. On this one over here, I'm just going to integrate this with integration by parts. We'll use the di method over to the right on this. What I'll do is I'll just differentiate this whole thing, natural log u squared plus 4, and then I'm just going to create a 1 so we can integrate this 1. Taking the derivative here, this is going to become 1 over u squared plus 4. Then chain rule in this creates a 2u. Here, the integral of 1, that's just u. So just focusing on this integral here for the moment, we're going to first get part of our solution on the diagonal. So we're going to have, this is going to become u ln u squared plus 4. And then this, and then this row here, this is going to be an integral. So we're going to have, bring a minus 2 out as a constant. And we're going to have u squared over u squared plus 4. In order to do this, I'm just going to add a 4 here to simplify this. So this is 1, but I don't want to change it, so there's going to be a minus 4. What I'll do is distribute the minus 4 to the minus 2, and we'll have a plus 8 in front. And over here, we're integrating du over u squared plus 4. But over here, we're just integrating 1. Over here, this integral is just going to be our arctan formula. So putting all the pieces of this together, let me get a little bit of space here. Copy down this part, u ln u squared plus 4, 
Then here we have minus two, but integral of one, that's just gonna be a u. Then here we have plus eight arctan of this, but with our arctan formula, we get this right here is like a two squared, so we're gonna have u over two here, and we need to divide by two up front. So then we'll take this and plug it in with everything we have here, try to keep everything organized. So then distributing, we'll take this two out, two times minus a fourth, we have minus one half. Integral of ln u, I'm just gonna use the formula here. This is gonna be u, ln u minus u. And then for this, we have all this stuff, but I need to distribute in minus one fourth times a minus, we have a plus one fourth in all this. This is gonna become plus one fourth u, ln u squared plus four. Then here, plus a fourth times this is gonna be minus one half u. Plus a fourth times, this is four, this is just gonna be one arctan u over two. Everything here, we just need to evaluate from zero to infinity. One thing I can cancel is we have minus a half u here, this is gonna become a plus one half u here. And then I can again combine my natural log, factor out a u. How I'm gonna do this, let's see, so I'll bring a u out. I'm gonna create a one fourth here. If I multiply by a half here, square this here. So this is gonna become u over four, natural log. We're dividing this here, it's gonna be u squared plus four over u. And then we have this, just this arctan of u over two. So now first evaluating an infinity, this one's gonna be an indeterminate form. You can do the limit out on this. If you do this with L'Hopital's rule, this limit's gonna be just a zero here. And then for the second part, evaluate arctan and infinity pi over two. Second part, evaluate at zero, another indeterminate form. You can do L'Hopital's rule again. The interesting thing is whether you evaluate this at infinity or zero, it's zero again. So we just get another zero here. Arctan at zero, that's just zero. This goes away, this goes away. For my final solution to this, we just have pi over two. Okay, anyway, there you go. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.